We are in 303, and we now turn to the first chapter of Craig Conrad's unstoppable volume. We will now look at this very first introductory chapter, and we'll begin to ask ourselves a few questions about who is this person, Craig Conrad, and what is this book that we're reading? Some of you may be familiar with Craig Conrad, Mr. Conrad's presentations and schools and the like. Let's now maybe get to know Mr. Conrad in a little closer way by looking at some of the chapters from the Unstoppable book. We'll start with lesson number one, which is going to be a significant one and one that we'll come back to many, many times as an idea. Look for the pony. We want to begin right now in our notes by writing down the concept of a word picture. A word picture. Sometimes we'll refer to it in any of those classes as a metaphor or an analogy. In other words, one thing which represents something else. Let's go ahead and read and maybe figure out what is his interesting word picture. I can no longer recall what my brother Kevin and I were fighting about that day long ago, but I'll never forget Dad's advice. Quote, look for the pony, he said to me when once again I complained about my brother. I didn't realize then that Dad's words of wisdom would change my life forever almost 20 years later, not to mention the impact those words would have on tens of thousands of others. Actually, Dad didn't say look for the pony at first. He simply asked me if I knew what an optimist was. I gave the most intelligent answer any second grader could muster. Isn't he the guy that fixes your glasses, an optometrist, which is, of course, very close to an optimist, right? I asked inquisitively. When Dad finished laughing, he told me an optimist always looks at the bright or positive side to all of life's situations, while a pessimist always looks at the dark or negative side. Sensing my confusion, he told me this Christmas story. Now we've got a story that the father is going to tell to the son, Mr. Conrad. The story was about two brothers who raced downstairs Christmas morning to discover their presence underneath the tree. Upon opening his first present, gift, the pessimistic brother found a beautiful, red, shiny fire truck. Almost instantly, he started complaining about the present, eventually tossing it to the side. On the other hand, the optimistic brother smiled joyfully after discovering a single piece of horse poop in his first box. The pessimist brother snarled after opening his second gift. It was a beautiful brown leather baseball glove, but he had asked Santa for a tan one. Meanwhile, his optimistic brother was giggling and laughing after discovering his second box was filled with more horse poop. The pessimist threw a tantrum after opening the box with a sparkling new Tonka truck because it wasn't the exact one he wanted. The optimist could hardly wait to open his last present, the biggest box of all. When he tore off the lid, he couldn't believe his eyes. It was filled to the brim with more horse poop. The optimist started screaming and yelling, jumping up and down. That's when the pessimistic brother asked, Are you crazy? You just got three boxes of horse poop. What in the world could you possibly be so excited about? To which the optimistic brother exclaimed, With all of this horse poop, there's got to be a pony around here someplace. Dad's message was, Son, look for the pony. Now I must confess that as a second grader, I truly didn't understand the significance of this message, but... Opening Christmas gifts later that year had a whole new twist of excitement and anticipation. Twenty years later, I would desperately need to recall that story as a woodshop teacher up to my neck in poop, so to speak. Eventually, I was able to find the pony, but only after I was told, you're fired. Now, Mr. Conrad is going to introduce us to an important word picture. Let's make sure we write it down. Of course, he is going to make a distinction between the optimist and the pessimist. Okay? The optimist is always going to have a certain kind of view that's different from the pessimist. Notice it this way. Regularly when bad things happen to people, like to us, our first inclination is to ask, why is this happening to me? Right? Why is this happening to me? Ugh. The suggestion here is, We've got to learn to ask a different question. Not why did this happen to me, but rather why did this happen for me? Ah, now that one we're going to write down. If you need a comment or a question to remind you of this, tape it in your locker at school. And the next, thing, some, the next time something bad happens to you, somebody picks on you, somebody makes fun of you because of what you wear, because of something that happened to you. In other words, as Mr. Conrad calls it, you're in, you're up to your neck in poop. Bad stuff. Notice that our first instincts are to ask, why is this happening to me? Uh, 
The only problem with that question is it makes us appear to be a victim where bad things are always happening to us and there's not a lot we can do about it. We don't have any control. When we change the preposition from to to for, why is this happening for me? Now all of a sudden I'm no longer a victim. Now all of a sudden I can take any negative experience and I can find something I can learn out of that negative experience. That is to say, I look for the pony. In other words, I'm always trying to see something good in the middle of something bad. Is that easy, do you think? The answer, of course, is what? Absolutely not. It is extremely difficult, which is why most people, when bad things happen, will ask, why this happened to me? But if you can learn, and that's the whole point of our study together with the Unstoppable Book, if you can learn to ask this question, it will transform the way you live your life. Right? Instead of thinking of yourself as a victim, where terrible things happen to you all the time. Rather, you're an individual who always is taking whatever's happening to you and learning something from it. Why did this happen for me? The Unstoppable Book, Chapter 1. Thank you. It's a, it's a legitimate first story, right?